my heart. He saved my poor soul and lifted my burdens and gave me a brand new start. Now I've got something to shout about. Heaven's my eternal home. That wonderful place where I'll live forever, never again to roam. Not one little grave in all that fair land. Heartaches and tears are unknown. I've got something to shout about. I mean to make heaven my home. Someday I must cross that chilly dark water, but Jesus will be at my side to pilot my soul to heaven's bright portals forever with loved ones abide. Now I've got something to shout about. Heaven's my eternal home. That wonderful place where I'll live forever, never again to roam. Not one little grave in all that fair land. Heartaches and tears are unknown. I've got something to shout about. I mean to make heaven my home. You know, we're, we're living in an awful quiet world. You know, people don't don't express themselves for the Lord very much, but we have a lot to shout about. I mean, we got a, we got a lot to be happy about, and uh, you know, lift up our our voices and praise Him. You know, I think uh, in this past year, honestly, it's been hard on churches, not just our church, but churches all around, and uh, it's been hard on uh, Christians. But I think a lot of times for uh, and I know I might get in trouble for saying this, but I, I think that a lot of Christians bring it upon themselves. Uh, COVID is a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. I believe it's bad. I believe it's real. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying it's not real and that there's problems. But uh, you know, I think the, that a lot of folks have used COVID as an excuse to just stay away from God. Uh, you know, stay away from church. Stay away from the things of God. And it hurts your relationship with God. Amen. You know, it, it does. Mm -hmm. You know, there, online, that's fine. If you can't come, I'm, I'm glad people are watching online. But the Bible says, Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. If you can't see the day approaching right now, I don't know. <laughs> you better get some glasses or something. Uh, Jesus is coming, folks, and we need each other's encouragement. We need uh, to be among our brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to be praising him and worshiping him to be quite honest with you, you know, when it's just all quiet, it, it's it's hard, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, to 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 be excited. But you need to be excited. You know, it's hard on the pastor uh, when nobody wants to do anything. I can't carry this load by myself, folks. I'll just tell you that right now. Right. I can't be the music. I can't be the preaching. I can't be the teaching. I can't be everything. The church needs to come together and pick up the slack and say, hey, there's our preacher. Uh, who can do some singing? Who can do the piano playing? Who can do the church? I, I know that we got some folks that are teaching, but I can't do it all. And I'm glad we got some folks that are picking up. But you know, don't expect me to be the the the, the spark that that brings the spirit every time. You know, it takes everyone being obedient to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, not just the preacher. Uh, you know, I can get up here and I can try to to preach, but you know, when people aren't being obedient to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, it makes it super difficult. On the preacher, and I'm not even into the message right yet, but, uh, you know, my, my message is keep the fire stirred. You know, 2020, I think that a lot of Christians have just uh, put a few logs on at the end of 2019 and said, okay, we're going to put the dampers on and we're going to let it smolder uh, and see if we can just keep it burning. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to be satisfied with just keeping it burning. I don't want to be satisfied with it just smoldering. I want us to open the doors up, throw on some wood, uh, knock away the ashes, get the fire burning, uh, and keep on keeping on for the Lord. Friend, it ain't going to get any better. Uh, you know, I, I guarantee you that there's always going to be a struggle. And, and as far as I'm concerned right now, our government is using COVID as a stick to beat people down. That's right. uh, they're using it to try to discourage people. They're using it to try to get people to depend upon the government. They're using it to try to get people to submit mm -hmm. uh, to you do what we want you to do or else. Hey, you've got churches in America today that are being fined every day that they have a church service. Yeah. Is that America or China? you got people, preachers, that are being arrested for 
for going to church and trying to lead their church. Is that America or China? We're living in America today for the time being now that if Christians don't stand up and American people don't stand up and say, hey, I'm, I'm free to do what I want to do. I'm free to worship the God of heaven. Hey, then we're going to lose those rights and those privileges in America today. I'm telling you, it is coming. Amen. we got a president that's getting ready to take office uh, in, in just a few days, and he says, our darkest days are ahead of you. How's that for encouragement? You know, uh, our, I'm, and, uh, my darkest days aren't ahead of me. My brightest days are ahead of me. Amen. You know, right. heaven awaits for you and I. And the world today is just so discouraged and downhearted. Hey, put your eyes upon Jesus. Now, let's get into the message before we get started on something else here. But um, first, 2 Timothy chapter two, chapter 1, starting at verse 1, I want to read some scripture here. And, and what I've said just kind of goes along with this message. And, uh, you know, uh, keep your eyes upon Jesus. Don't, don't, don't put your mind upon the things of this world. There's some, there's some words in these passages of Scripture here. I don't know if I'll get to preach what I've got down here. It's not, my mind's going a thousand different places this morning. But the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord, I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now manif made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and teacher of the, of the Gentiles. May God have blessing to the reading of this word. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you, Lord, for the privilege you've given us to be in your house. Father, we thank you for the mercy and the grace you bestow upon us on a daily basis. Heavenly Father, thank you that uh, your grace is so abundant. Heavenly Father, thank you that it's uh, just unending. Lord, I pray that you would help us, Lord, to be uh, the vessel you'd have us to be. Heavenly Father, help us to be able to preach this morning. Lord, you know what our heart is. And Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd help us to express the message that you've given us. Heavenly Father, in our heart, Lord, we'll give you the praise and the glory for all that's accomplished. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna. I'm gonna use verse six there as a as a starting point. It says, "Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by by the putting on of my of my hands, uh, that thou stir up the gift of God." You know, I was thinking about, and this just kind of came to me as I was reading it there again. That he says, Paul told Timothy, he said that thou stir up the gift of God. And you know, Paul wasn't saying, I'm going to stir it up. He said, Timothy, it's your job to stir it up. Uh, you've got it stirred up. You've got the gift that's, that's, in, that's in you. Uh, stir up that gift. I like verse 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. You know, I, I think a lot of Christians today that are scared of COVID ought to read that verse right there. What's it say? God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. I'm telling you, a lot of people have lost their mind over this disease. Uh, again, I know that it's serious. I know that people that are dying from it. But I'm saying, uh, you know, don't, you got to continue to live, folks. Uh, you know, be careful, but you got to continue to live. Uh, you got to continue to, to, to be a servant for Jesus Christ. You got to continue to live your life. You can't depend upon the government for absolutely everything. And I think that that's where they're headed today. Uh, they want, uh, to shut down everything and make people totally dependent upon the government. 
so that you can eat when they tell you you can eat and you can drink when they tell you you can drink and you can go to work when they tell you you can go to work. That's not the way it should be, folks. We live in America and we're losing our freedoms every day. Uh, stand up for what's right. Uh, you know, don't let, don't have a spirit of fear about you. Hey, God has set us free uh, and we're, we got a, a, a spirit of, of power and of love and of a sound mind. And you and I, as we read God's word, we ought to have one of the soundest minds uh, around because we know what God's word says and we're confident in what God's word says. We believe what God's word says. But I think uh, in 2020, this past year, a lot of Christians have gotten complacent and they kind of let the fire burn down. Uh, they, they've not even put any logs on, let alone go out and cut wood if you want to talk about going out and working a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, they're afraid to even go out there and open up a door and put a log on the fire, mm-hmm. let alone go out and be a witness for him, let, let alone go out there and try to cut some wood and get something done, get some work done. Uh, they don't even want to put a log on the fire. Friends, if we don't get busy, the, the fire will burn down. I'm saying not, I'm not saying you'll lose your salvation. I mean, you're going to certainly lose your relationship with God, a, a close relationship, your fellowship with him, if you don't tend to it. You ever try to keep a fire burning there? Now, when I was a kid, Dad used to heat with, with wood, and we'd split wood through the summer and stack it up there and carry it in winter. Uh, and to keep a fire burning, it takes a little bit of work. Amen. It takes some attention to the fire. It's not something you can just throw the wood on there and say, I'm done for a week. That's the way a lot of Christians are with their, with their relationship with God. They come in on Sunday morning, and they want to pull everything together and throw everything in the fireplace on Sunday morning and say, I've done everything I can do. We'll just let her burn now. Uh, if I make it next week, I'll put a little more white wood on. The thing about it is a lot of Christians don't make it next week. They wait three or four or five weeks, and they're expecting the wood they put on a month and a half ago to still be burning bright. Mm-hmm. Uh, that ain't the way it works. If you're going to keep a fire burning, guess what you do? You tend to it, and you keep putting food, fire on it, wood on it every time, every day. It takes effort. More than once a day, it, t- it takes effort to get Keep the fire burning and tend to it. But, uh, you know, 2020, you know what? God didn't change in 2020. God's still God. Mm-hmm. The people has changed as Christian people. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, God didn't change his desires for us in 2020. He didn't change his expectations for us in 2020. If you want to stir up the gift of God, the salvation that, that, that you've been given, uh, then, you know, stir it up. You know, your relationship with God is up to you. How close do you want to be to him? A lot of, I, I've said this and I'll stand by it too. Christians are as close to God as they want to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, how close do you want to be to him in 2021? You know, I, I'm afraid in 2020, a lot of Christians drifted off away from him. But how close do you want to be to him? Get close to him. You know, Malachi 3 and 6 God says, for I am the Lord, I change not. In the first part of that verse, he doesn't change. He hasn't changed. He's not going to change. God is always the same. You know, if you know, We're the ones who have to, to change. We're the ones that have to move up a little closer. Uh, we have to move closer to the Lord. We have to listen to uh, the preaching of his word. We have to respond. You know, James said, be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. A lot of folks just want to listen. And say, Boy, that was a good message, preacher. Okay, what are we going to do about it? You know, uh, we're going to put it into action. And I'm not saying that this preacher, I have all the answers. I know I'm not the best preacher in the world, but hey, do a little bit of due diligence and read your Bible. Uh, you know, and get in there and see what God's Word says. Listen to the preached Word, respond, be a doer of the Word, not a hearer only. Pray, uh, confess our sins. You know, 1 John 1 9, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just, forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Listen to the preacher there on, one of the preachers on, uh, Thursday night as we had a New Year's Eve watch service at Tomb Out, uh, Brother Atkins, Jeremy Atkins was preaching and he said, he said, uh, he said, man, he said, I'm glad for the grace of God. He said, I believe if there was an end to the grace of it, I'd have found uh, his grace, I'd have done found it by now. Uh, you know, I, you know, because he said, I just keep coming back and coming back and coming back. And I feel the same way. You know, when Paul said, I'm the chiefest of sinners, you know, sometimes I just want to argue and say, Lord, I, I know Paul said that, but I, I think I, I can claim that crown. Uh, you know, uh, it's a struggle every day. But thank God for his grace and his mercy. If we want to stay close to him, it's we got to make an effort to stay close to him. God doesn't move. He's, he's stationary in the sense that 
You know, he's not going anywhere in our life. If we're out of fellowship with God, it's not because God got out of fellowship with us. It's because we got out of fellowship with him. We've allowed things to come into our life and get out of fellowship with him in 2020. God's constant. Uh, if we lost ground, it's, it's not God's fault. It's His. It's our fault. Uh, so uh, realize that God doesn't change. And if, if, if we want a close relationship with him, it's up to us to stir the fire. It's up to us to keep putting the fuel on, uh, to stay close and, and do what we need to do to, to, to stay in the right relationship with him. And then think about our heart. Guard our relationship with God. You know, uh, Matthew 22, 37 says, Jesus saith unto him, or said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with, thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and all thy mind. You know, if we guard, uh, as Christians, guarding our heart, uh, we ought to guard against getting out of fellowship. We ought to guard against the losing ground, so to speak, uh, as a Christian in our relationship with God. Uh, we need to take care of our spiritual heart, so to speak. Uh, you know, the Bible says in Proverbs 4.23, it says, keep, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. You know, our heart, uh, the innermost part of our being. You know, the Bible says that out of it are the issues of life. You know, what's our relationship with God? Are we guarding our heart uh, in our relationship with God? Or will we let worldliness creep in, giving in to the flesh? Uh, I think lots of times for Christians, we're, we've allowed some things into our life that cause heart disease. Not physical heart disease, but spiritual heart disease. You know, uh, you know physical heart disease is caused when we don't, we don't take care of ourselves. You know, we uh, eat the things we shouldn't eat and we... <laughs> get lazy and we don't exercise we don't you know we just uh, don't do the things we should do to take care of our physical heart guess what same thing happens on a spiritual level as well that hey uh, you know if we don't take care of that spiritual heart and exercise in the sense of reading god's word and come to church and praying and you know uh keeping in a right relationship with him then we get spiritually lazy uh, we get out of shape spiritually start putting on a few unhealthy pounds spiritually uh, when we don't do the things that we should do as Christians, uh, when we don't pray as we should, and when we don't come to church as we should, and when we fail to witness as we should, we don't read our Bibles as we should, and yeah, that causes spiritual heart disease. And, and, and you know, we've got enough sense uh, to know when we're slipping in our relationship with God. You know, how do we know we're slipping in our, our in our physical efforts? I know because. It, most mornings I stand on the scale and say, I done gained another pound. <laughs> you know, I need to start exercising. You know, but I can say I got to start exercising all I want to. Mm -hmm. Ain't going to do me any good till I do. And a lot of Christians say, boy, I want to get closer to God. You can say that all you want to. But until you take the step to get closer to God, you're never going to get closer to him. You know, same thing with physical exercise. You know, we, we got to make the effort. If we're going to get closer to God, we got to make the effort. We got to we got to keep on top of it, keep stirring the fire. Second Peter chapter three verses one and two says, "This second epistle, beloved, I write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before of the holy prophets and of the commandments of the apostles of our Lord of our Lord and Savior." Hey, he says, "In which I." In, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. You know, keep remember what God, you know, God hasn't changed, remember? You know, remember what he's done in the past. Hey, he wants to do that for us now. He wants to do that for us in the future. You know, God's still the same. Uh, he'll, he'll still save people. People that are lost, they can still get saved. People who are out of fellowship, they can still renew their fellowship. Uh, people who never, uh, uh, you know, then the church can, can come to church and, and get saved. You know, but we, we look at people and say, well, I don't know, that's a pretty hard case. I don't know if, if God could do that. If, if we do that, something's wrong with us. Mm -hmm. Because nothing's impossible to God. Hey, he's, he's here to encourage us. He's here to help us. Uh, he, he went away to prepare a place for us. He's going to come again for us. All these things are in God's word. It ought to encourage us. It ought to stir us up. Knowing that Jesus is coming ought to stir Christians up. Seeing what's happening in our world today ought to stir Christians up uh, to the point say, you know what? It's time to do something for God. It's time to get closer to Him. 
I, I see what's happened, and I see the things falling into place, uh, and I want to do something for the Lord. And, that, and we ought to be stirred up. Stir the fire up. Put Bible principles into action in your life. You know, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. <laughs> then, you know, don't love what someone else does or is not doing hinder you. Mm. You know, uh, we look around, and we're guilty lots of times of looking around and saying, well, so-and-so's not coming to church or this one's not doing that and that, that one's not doing it. If they're not doing it, why should I? Mm. You know? Yeah. Because it's a personal relationship with God. That's right. You know, my relationship with God does not depend on Alan or Joe or Neil uh, or Josiah or Aaron. I'm picking on all the guys today. Uh, you know, my, my relationship to God does not depend upon you guys. Now, from a physical standpoint and maybe an encouragement standpoint, I can receive encouragement or discouragement from you all. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just the nature of having friends. You can be encouraged by your friends or you can be discouraged by your friends. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, uh, my relationship with God is not dependent upon you. That relationship is between me and God. You know, I, my relationship with God does not depend upon my wife. It's between me and God. Now, I want, a relation, I want her relationship to God to be good too. And when her relationship with God is good and my relationship with God is good, guess what? Our relationship's better too. You know, mm -hmm. that's just a simple, plain and simple fact of the matter. Uh, but, you know, uh, don't let some, what someone else is doing hinder you. John 21, verse 21 and 22 says, Peter seeth him, talking about John, and saith unto Jesus, Lord, and what shall, I, what shall this man do? Because Jesus has got through, just got through telling Peter what he was going to have him do. And Peter turned around and sees John and said, well, what's, what's John going to do? And Jesus said to him, if I will it, he tarry out till I come. What is that to thee? Follow thou me. Jesus said, it don't make any difference what he does. Your job is to follow me. And we can't look around and say, well, this group over here is not doing anything. Follow Jesus. You know, it don't make a difference what they're doing. We can't look and say, well, this individual is not doing anything. It don't make a difference what they're doing. Follow Jesus. That's what Jesus is saying. Follow me. Don't pay attention to what anybody else is doing. Follow me. You worry about your relationship with me. You know, lots of times, you know, the scripture talking about, you know, the moat and the beam. Uh, you know, we, we want to look and uh, we, we, we can look at people and see uh, the minutest speck of a flaw in other people. And we could have a huge beam in our life. And we're sitting there looking at the speck in somebody else's life and, and talking about it and, and Fail to realize and fail to see the, the huge beam in our own life, in our own mm -hmm. eye. Uh, hey, we need to be concerned about what our relationship is. Let God deal with individuals as he sees fit. And I'm not saying we shouldn't be a witness to people. I'm just saying that our primary concern should be our relationship with God, not based on what other people are doing for us. Then be faithful. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2 says, Moreover, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. You know, be faithful to guard your heart against the, the wiles of this old world. Be faithful to study God's word. Be faithful to walk with God. Be faithful to stay prayed up. Be faithful to attend church. I, I will tell you, one of the most encouraging things for uh, a preacher and probably for anybody that attends church regularly is to see other people's faithfulness. Uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm thankful for the old ones that preached uh, Brother Coleman's funeral this past Wednesday. And when he was here, in this area, he was faithful. He was faithful to come to church. And that's an encouragement. I think of all the older ones. They were faithful to come. Faithful uh, to, to be here when the doors were open. They were faithful. And that's an encouragement. For you and I as Christians, we ought to be faithful. Faithful to walk with God. Faithful to stay prayed up. Faithful to attend. And then, as we go into 2021, we ought to be vigilant as we watch for the, the wiles of the devil and the things that he's doing uh, to discourage us. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is roaring lion, walking by, seeking whom he may devour. I'll guarantee you the devil's going to be on the prowl in 2021. Mm -hmm. now, he, he's going to be looking for an opportunity to discourage you. He's going to be looking for an opportunity to destroy your testimony as a right. Christian. Uh, he, he, wants to, he, he wants to see you just stay at home in 2021. Mm -hmm. He, he yeah. just soon you stay right there. Don't bother with it. Uh, just just, just quit. Just lay down. 
You know, he can't have your, if you're saved, he can't have your soul. But if he can have your testimony, he'll be satisfied with that. Uh, if, you, if, you're, uh, if you're no good to, to be a witness for the Lord, he'll be satisfied that you just be put on the shelf and not be used of God. You know, be sober, be vigilant, because our devil, our adversary, is walking about seeking whom he may devour. Uh, when things start moving for the Lord in a church, guess what? The devil's going to be there. He's going to try to disrupt it. The devil's going to try to sow discord. He's going to try to sow, sow uh, friction and cause friction in a church. Mm -hmm. And we need to just keep on keeping on for him and be sober. Look, know, <laughs> know that he's going to work and know how he works. Ephesians 4, 30 and 30 through 32 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and all evil and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. I love that verse right there. You know, sometimes a lot of people get so upset with other people and they say, well, I just can't forgive them. Well, I'm glad that God didn't have that attitude with us. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you say, I can't forgive them, then you need to look at him and say, I'll forgive you for Christ's sake. <laughs> you know, that's what the Bible says to do. Be ye kind one to another, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake forgave us, uh, have forgiven you. you know, God didn't forgive us because of what we had done. He forgave us because of what Christ did. Uh, when he died on the cross of Calvary, he paid that sin debt. But 2021, we're, we're in it. You know, 21 years ago in 2000, I thought, man, 2021's a long ways away. I don't know if we ever make it there. Well, we're here. Don't quit on him now. You know, be faithful. Stir the fire. Stir the fire. Put another log on. Go out there and cut some wood. Uh, get ready uh, to keep putting the fuel to the fire because we need to tend to the fire and see that we keep burning bright for the Lord in 2021. Let's get a song of invitation. If you have a need, this altar is open. We want to invite you to come.